Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my October TBR. This has been the month I have been waiting for all year, especially for the books. These have been the books I've been excited to read all year long. And this TBR is ridiculous. It's absurd. It has so many books on it. I'm not stupid. I know I'm not gonna get to all of them, but I could not decide. These are all of the books that I'm being hopefully optimistic and maybe by some miracle I will get to them all. I just love spooky season and I love spooky books and I wanna read them all, but I just don't have enough time. But if I don't get to them, that just means they'll roll over into November. So it's really not a big deal. But since making all of my fall recommendation videos, which if you haven't seen them, I'll leave the playlist down below. And since making those videos, it's been making me want to reread a lot of the books that I was talking about, so I added even more onto this TBR. Plus, you guys recommended books to me on those videos, so I added even more books. So long story short, let's just get straight into my TBR for this month. I'll have all of the books linked down below in the description if you wanna check them out. So the first book that I have to talk about is Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. This is the third book in the Diviner series. I'm currently reading Layer of Dreams, which is the second book. I'm really hoping to finish this in September. And then I believe the third book is coming out in February of next year. My only concern with putting this book on my TBR is these books are so big and so long. So if I were smart, I would pick shorter books so I could get through more of them. But this series is honestly just the perfect series to read around Halloween and I couldn't pass up this opportunity. If you haven't started the Diviner series yet, would highly recommend. I read the first book for last Halloween. I'm reading this one around now and I'm hoping to read the third book as well. They are a paranormal mystery set in the 1920s and diviners are basically just people who have some kind of power. Our main character Evie can touch personal objects of someone and then kind of see their secrets through the object. And the first book is all about a serial killer who's running through New York City and Evie is trying to use her power to figure out who's committing these murders. And then Layer of Dreams is about this sleeping sickness. Basically, it's becoming an epidemic. People are falling asleep and then never waking up. They're getting trapped in their dreams and some of the diviners can dream walk. So yeah, I'm really enjoying the series so far and I'm hoping to pick up the third book this month. There's also, I believe, a read-along happening right now. I know like Emma Books, Sarah without an H, and Monica I think are running it. I just saw that on Twitter today and I was like, huh, that's really good timing. So if I can find a link for some information about that, I'll link that down below also if you guys want to participate in that because I think that's a really cool thing happening right now. Next on my TBR is from one of my recommendation videos and that is The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. I'm hoping to do a reread of this this year. This book is about vampires in a world where cold towns exist, which are basically these quarantined areas where vampires go live because vampires are kind of thought of of as being infected. And so humans can go into these cold towns, but then they can't come back out because they're considered infected. And it's a paranormal romance. And I loved this book the first time I read it. I definitely gave it a five out of five stars, but it's been years and it's well time for a reread. I love vampire books. I love paranormal romance. And this book is super dark and atmospheric and sort of gothic feeling. And I'm totally in the mood for that right now. The next book I have on my TBR is Turn of the Key. This is a thriller. I've been in such a thriller mood lately. I put a hold on this for my library like months ago the line was like over a hundred people long like this book is so popular right now and I've just heard great things about this author in general you might know her from the woman in cabin 10 I feel like that book got pretty popular I actually have no idea what this book is about I just know the hype and that I've been in the mood for thrillers but reading the description it sounds like our main character is writing to her lawyer from prison struggling to explain what happened leading up to her getting incarcerated there's a dead child and as compared to agatha christie books like this sounds awesome our main character is a live-in nanny and it's a smart home with like a ton of technology and stuff in the scottish highlands and apparently somehow the child dies i don't know i'm really excited to find out though i've heard nothing but really good reviews for this book and like I said earlier, I am really in the mood for thrillers. I feel like they're perfect for this time of year. And as many fast paced books as I can get in this month, I need because it'll help me get through this TBR. And next for a little change of pace, I have Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. This is the sequel to City of Ghosts and this is a middle grade novel. I read City of Ghosts last October as well. And the first book was really, really cute. And I believe this is being adapted now. So our main character's name is Cassie Blake and she can see ghosts and her best friend is a ghost. Her parents recently made her move to Europe because they were filming this TV show, which is sort of like a ghost hunter show. They explore haunted landmarks and stuff. And so this is the sequel. And in this one, they're in Paris and she accidentally awakens a frighteningly strong 
spirit. I really, really enjoyed the first book. Reading it felt like I was watching one of the old school like Disney Channel Halloween movies like Halloween Town and Twitches and stuff like that. So I figured this one would be nice to throw in this month just for like a nice lighthearted read to sort of balance out the creepier books that I'm reading this month. But highly recommend picking up this series even if you don't think you like middle grade. This series so far has just been super cute and I really enjoyed it. And I also just love Victoria Schwab and I love her writing. So her books are always a good pick. Next I have The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This book just came through on my library. Perfect timing. This is another thriller and I actually read another one of his books last month and that was Lock Every Door and I loved that one. I ended up giving it a five out of five stars so I knew I wanted to try another one of his books. And so this one is about a young woman who returns to her childhood summer camp to uncover the truth about a tragedy that happened there 15 years ago. Are any of you guys watching American Horror Story this season? That's exactly what this sounds like. So our main character is now a rising star in the New York art scene but when she was a kid she was playing like two truths and a lie with some other girls and that was the last time anyone ever saw the other girls I guess. And so now when she returns she's staying in the same cabin that she used to be in and there's this weird security camera pointing only at that cabin like this the only one on the premises and she's trying to figure out what happened to the girls all those years ago basically. I don't know but I trust this author. I really really enjoyed his last thriller and this one sounds super good and it's got great reviews so I'm really looking forward to this one. The next one I have on my TBR is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I think a lot of people are planning to read this this month if they haven't already if you got an arc of it. All I know about this is it's a vampire book and it's set in New Orleans and I think it's also like a historical fiction so it's set in the past sometime. This is literally all I know about it but that's all I need to know about it. I love vampire books and I've also been on a historical kick with the diviners and everything lately and vampires in New Orleans just sounds like it's gonna be like the tv show the originals so I'm really looking forward to this one. Another new release that I'm hoping to read this month is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is an adult like urban fantasy I believe. I think it's set at Yale. It seems to be very confusing and from the reviews that I've seen people have just been really confused reading this but it sounds like there are these eight different houses that are basically like sororities and fraternities but like a cult or something and our main character is in the ninth house which I think is supposed to like keep the other ones in check or something like that. I could be totally wrong about this. All I know is everyone says it's super dark. I know there's a ton of triggers in here and it gets really really dark so don't go in expecting this to be like her YA books if you want to read it. Look up trigger warnings in advance. I've heard the subject matter is really intense but I am in the mood for something super dark and twisted and just eerie and I really like Leigh Bardugo's writing style so I'm very curious to see how she tackles adult fantasy compared to her previous books. Another thriller that I'm hoping to get to is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I've heard so many people People talk about how much they love this book. One of my friends here actually read this recently and told me I had to read it. I know a lot of you guys have recommended this to me. This book is about Ellie who was kidnapped when she was 15 and the book takes place 10 years later and her mom never gave up hope of finding her and the mom gets like swept away by this stranger like romantically and then she goes back with him and meets his daughter who's nine years old and is like this spitting image of her missing daughter. This book sounds crazy and like it's really gonna upset me and be really disturbing but I'm really excited about it. Another book that I'm hoping to get to this month is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I have the physical book and then I also have the audiobook from my library and I know this has to do with Korean folklore. Our main character is like a nine-tailed fox or something and I think she like kills men or like sucks the souls out of men to survive or something awesome like that but she's also half human and has a soft spot for people so she doesn't kill indiscriminately and I think this is also a romance and it's set in modern day Seoul. This sounds like nothing that I've been reading lately. I know Books with Chloe really really loves this book. I've heard some mixed reviews for it but I have high hopes and I'm excited to give something new a try. I'm definitely not familiar with Korean folklore so I'm really intrigued by this. I'm also hoping to potentially get to Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. This is the sequel to This Savage Song which I read a year, maybe two years ago. Like I said before, I love Victoria Schwab and I feel like any of her books have like the right vibes for fall. They're all good picks to read around this time of year but this book in particular I really want to get to. I loved this Savage Song and I don't know why I didn't go straight into the sequel because it was definitely out by the time I read the Savage Song but this is a duology so this is the end of the series so I really need to read this. And I gave five out of five stars to this Savage Song. The Savage Song is basically set in a world where monsters are created out of violent acts and depending on how bad the violent act was. It's a different kind of monster and we're following two main characters. One of them is a human and one of them is a monster who's just kind of trying to get along in the human world. And I love how this book played with 
morality and what it really means to be human. And I really want to pick up the sequel, but I am very fuzzy on the details of the first book. So I'm either going to have to watch someone's like spoilery book review or potentially reread that as well this month. A couple of other ones that I threw on here because I would really love to get to, but I really don't think I'm going to get to are Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is another Riley Sager book, but odds are if I end up loving The Last Time I Lied, I will probably jump straight to this one afterwards. I also keep saying I'm going to read this one and then I never get to it, and that's Club Dead by Charlene Harris. This is the third book in the Sookie Stackhouse series. I read the first two books a couple of months ago, and this is just sort of a trashy paranormal romance, so maybe if I'm looking for something more lighthearted, I'll jump to this one. I'm kind of just keeping my options open and I have this long list so I can jump to whatever one I'm in the mood for at that time, especially coming out of a reading slump in September. I'm trying to be prepared this month, okay? Another book I'm hoping to get to is Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. You guys have been recommending this to me since it came out. All I know is it's a YA thriller and some people say it's like their favorite thriller of all time. I read another one of Kara Thomas's books and I didn't love it. I think that's kind of what's held me back from starting this one. I read um, her book, The Cheerleaders earlier this year. So basically our main character, Casey, moves to a new town with her father and she suddenly has like a stepmom, step siblings, and an adoring younger half sister. And everything is going really well. Everyone is so nice there. She's got a new circle of friends. And then it sounds like someone goes missing and everyone starts to look at her. I don't really know. The description is really vague and especially with thrillers like this, I kind of like going in blind, but everyone's really high reviews of this are enough to make me want to read it. So I'm really, really hoping I love it too, especially since I didn't really love the cheerleaders because if I don't like this one again, I might give up on this author and just decide that she's not for me. And then if by some miracle, I still manage to get to some other books this month, I have a couple of other rereads I would love to get to. So even if I don't get to these, if you haven't read these yet, just consider these recommendations of things that you should read. I would love to reread Vampire Academy this month, but I know if I start with this, I'm gonna reread the entire series and then probably the entire spin-off series and that's all I'm gonna read this month. Vampire Academy, I haven't read this in such a long time, but I remember binging the heck out of these books the first time I read them. I'm sure you all are kind of familiar at least with these books. It's about a boarding school for vampires. There's two different kinds of vampires. The Moroi have like magical powers and the Dampiers are basically their bodyguards. The good thing is if I try to reread this, I know I'll be able to reread it fast. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I would love to read Night Film by Marisha Pussell. This is one of my all-time favorite books. It's an adult psychological thriller, but this is a very long, dense, slow book. So if I reread this, I know it's going to take me a long time. And I would want to take a long time with it to enjoy it again, because it's been a long time since I've read this. I feel like I've been hyping this book up in like every fall video that I've made so far, so I won't get super into it here. But this book follows Scott, who's an investigative journalist who's looking into the potential suicide of this famous occult horror film director's daughter who he has a sort of sketchy past with. And then I've actually already started this reread, but I set it aside momentarily because I'm trying to finish all of the other books I'm reading right now. And that is the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Again, this is so different from most of the other books on my TBR because it's so lighthearted. I think just having this at the ready will be nice if I want to switch over to something a little more lighthearted. And I haven't actually read the illustrated editions yet. I just got them recently. So I'm really excited to go through this. And I love Harry Potter this time of year. I love watching the movies in the fall. I feel like this is the time of year where this series thrives. So I would love, love to get to this, but it's not high on my priority list. So yeah, that's my TBR for October. Sorry, I know this video was very messy and sort of less organized than usual, but that's just because I have a feeling this month it's going to be less organized than usual. I'm just so excited about so many different books and I can't make up my mind and trying to force myself to make up my mind was stressing me out. So I just decided we'll just have a really big TBR and we'll just read whatever we're in the mood for as the month goes on. So yeah, if you've read any of these books, feel free to let me know what you thought of them down in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts or tell me what book you are most excited for to read in October. I think my most anticipated book this month is either Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, The Beautiful by Renee Adier, or The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, or maybe Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very excited about my TBR this month. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are having a fabulous start to your month. Or if you're not as into spooky season as I am, I apologize in advance for spamming your feed with all of my Halloween love. But yeah, if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe. I put up at least two new videos every single week. Follow me on Instagram if you want. All my links are down below in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It helps out my channel a lot. And other than that, I will just see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye. 
So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With